Hello community! Today we are back and we had a poll. And I asked you about some days ago. Hey, are you interested in... here we go. Some new sentence transformer algorithms and would you rather prefer adaptive pre-training or the new GPL? Well, nine votes are in as far and 100% is on adaptive pre-training. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our adaptive pre-training. We are here in Colab, Jupyter Notebook. And here we go, Neural Search. All credits, please, go to espert.net. This is the link where you find all the information. There are two beautiful papers if you want to deep dive into it. The first is Sentence Part, Sentence Embedding. And the second is TSDA, uh, using transformer-based SQL denoising autoencoder for unsupervised sentence embedding learning. You have three authors, three geniuses, and today we are talking about domain adaptation as requested by our viewers. <laughs> okay, just at the beginning, if you're not familiar, uh, we need some label data. And um, you can either have some NLI, this means natural language inference. This is a structure where you're given two sentences. One is called a premise, one is called a hypothesis. And the task is to decide if the premise entails the hypothesis. If there is a contradiction between those two sentences, or if you can't see anything at all, if they are, so to say, neutral. And the commonly used data set are the SNLI and the multi-NLI. So, again, you can train your SBART model on an NLI task, where you have a data set of data sentence pairs and one of three labels, entailment, neutral, or contradiction. And uh, looking at the publication, one of the authors, Neil Zweimer, said we also found that in our sentence bird paper, and often use NLI as the first fine-tuning step for sentence embedding methods. So maybe a preference for NLI. But if you say, hey, I'm looking for a STS, semantic textual similarity. So we assign a score on the similarity of two texts. The two texts can be sentences or even a little bit more. We use a benchmark. Yeah, you can find you in your network, but the structure that you have is first sentence, then you have a second sentence, and then you have a score. Sometimes it's a numerical score. Sometimes it's an integer, float, whatever, that gives you the, a measure of similarity. So with these two uh, pre defined, let's go to the main topic today, domain adaptation. What is it? Simple. We want to adapt the text embedding models, the sentence embedding models, to your specific text domain. So if you were a lawyer and you want some specific law uh, paragraphs or books or whatever, or if you are in medicine or if you are in taxation or if you are in a very particular astronomy or whatever, if you have a specific domain knowledge and you have some specific text in your domain and you want to apply sentence or BERT embedding to this domain that is specific to you, welcome, you're at the right place. This is what called domain adaptation. And normally you have an unlabeled corpus and this is, I don't know, the, all the publications you are interested in in your new field. And then you have an existing labeled corpus. In this label corpus, already some pre-trained models have been trained on this. So, adaptive pre-training. So, within domain adaptation, we're going to look at exactly what has been requested. Remember, the request was adaptive pre-training, 100%. So, here we go. Whatever the US want, we deliver. <laughs> so, what is adaptive pre-training? Um... What you want is more or less, I haven't sick, but that's colorful, uh, a two-step approach. So you have some labeled data. You have some source domain. For example, you have MS Marco data set or whatever. 
when you have already a fine-tuned label data set. Now, if you say, what the hell is MS Marco? MS Marco stands for Microsoft Machine Reading Comprehension Dataset. Have a sec. Uh, it's a collection of datasets focused on deep learning in search. was a question answering dataset featuring 100,000 Bing question and a human generated answer. And they have extended this to a 1 million question dataset, natural language generation dataset, and so on. And if you're looking for all the different downloads, you see here the loaders you have either a dataset or at Facebook research. I do prefer a hugging face, but whatever you prefer, this is a predefined uh, machine uh, reading comprehension dataset from Microsoft. So, so what you want to have, you want to have a model that has been trained on some data, and then you say, and now I want to have some uh, target domain added to this knowledge in my uh, sentence transformer. For example, if you want to have a specific uh, medical topic, a specific medical subject, astrophysical training, you want to add. And then you say, okay, and then I add an unsupervised target domain. The target domain is medicine in your case. Uh, and unfortunately, if you do this in this way, so you take a, a trained model, you do some unsupervised target domain training, the results are not great. Yes, they are a little bit better than without any, any training. You just take the pre-trained model itself, but this is definitely not the way to go. So, and with adaptive pre-training, there was a way, and the way is to switch it around. I mean, as strange as it sounds, this is it. Adaptive pre-training does the pre-training on the target domain. So you take your medical uh, lectures or your medical preprints or your astrophysical preprints or whatever data you have, and you do a pre-training in the first step on the target domain now. And you might ask, hey, what pre-training method delivers the best results? Now, the best, I think, is TSDA. You know this, as I showed you before. There is this beautiful uh, publication on this, if you want to have a deep dive, or I already, not a, for the code, just a second. So this is the methodology. At first, you do the pre-training on the target domain with TSDA, and then and this is the important step, you do the fine tuning on some labeled data, on your source data, MS Marco, for example. So this is everything you need to know from a theory point of view. Let's jump to the code. But before, yeah, so it's a two step approach. At first you do the TSDA training. Now, I know some complained of you in my last three videos on Sentence Transformers, I always, always showed you TSDA code and I received some comments. Thank you, we know it. So beautiful. You know it, congratulations. So I do not have to show you the first step, the first coding, everybody knows this. And then the second is of course, the fine tuning on label data. Now this is a standard procedure from uh, sentence transformers. Now the data set that you choose could have some significance. I don't know for your specific case, but let's say if I did a training on, for example, a high energy physics, a quantum field theory was my target domain. And then I did some fine tuning on label data set. It was sensible if I have some very general data set from politics about, uh, to biology to, I don't know, economy, or I have a labeled data set. You remember our labeled data set has either this sentence pair with three labels or a sentence or one, two sentence with a numerical label. If you, you have to have this labeled data set and I don't know which kind of labeled data sets you have, but be careful because if there is a certain semantic relation, you get better results in my humble opinion. So if you're looking for other data sets, you can download easy hugging face data sets slash sentence transformers, then embedding training data couldn't be easier. And then the all NLI JSON file 
And I told you the NLI. What is all NLI easy? It is the SNLI and the multi NLI. This two together already in one data set for you here to download very easily. If you click it, uh, yes, completed, done. So for the coding. So first part TSDA is clear. Second part is straightforward. Whatever you know, there's nothing new to this. It is just this, this two-step approach. You have your sentence transformer, you have your models, your losses, your data set, you have your pure sentence transformers, you have your utility function. Nice is now in the preparation of the data set. You have here the input example. Please read about this. And then for the evaluation, we, yeah, have a look at this if you want to evaluate it. You have the embedding similarity evaluator already defined for you, ready to be imported, operational, up and running. It could not be better. And remember, all of this goes to all credits to sport.net, to those three geniuses here with their publication. So this is it. Uh, code. Yes, code is very easy. You define a path to your model, whatever you take. And then, as I told you, as I showed you in my five other videos on sentence transformers, this is you take your word embedding model, your transformer, whatever you have, your Roberta, your big uh, your distilled Roberta, your big Roberta, whatever. Then you have the pooling layer, of course. You define what kind of pooling you want to have, mean, max, minimum, whatever. And then you build your sentence transformers. You train your sentence transformers. So you have your word embedding model and your pooling model. And I also showed you in one of the last videos, you can add a dimensionality reduction here by adding here as a third component here in the parenthesis, a dense layer. So you can go from 768 dimensional to a 256 dimensional representation, representational learning. Okay. So you check that your data set exists or you extract it, as I already showed you, all LNI or the STS benchmark. You can also download it directly from uh, sport.net. There's a data set available for you. Or as I showed you, you choose any other data set you find on Hugging, hugging Face data sets. Be careful to choose sentence transformer, embedding training data, and then just go, go for it has been beautifully prepared for you to use it. So read the old NLI data set, create the training data set. So remember we have two sentences and we have three uh, features, contradiction, entailment, and neutral. And then you want to have something that goes sentence one, label one, and sentence two. And what you are, end up with is exactly here you have a triplet, sentence one, sentence two, and a specific label. So these are your training samples, blah, blah, blah. You append it, you do it. You have to log information and then you can, yeah, to avoid duplicates, there's some something done for you. You just have to activate it, new duplicates data loader, beautiful. And then careful now for the last function, you remember? We can improve our loss function going for a multiple negative ranking loss. And it's much more intuitive, produces better results for sentence representations. So I would highly recommend that you go for the multi-negative ranking loss. Uh, yes, that, and it's rather easy. Yes, of course, you have just to transform it similar sentences. You want to have close by in your topological vector space and dissimilar sentences who have a semantic content that does not relate at all. You want to have far apart from each other if you have an Euclidean matrix or whatsoever. For a benchmark data set, yeah, you can read the benchmark data set. You have your similarity evaluator who cares about this. You have some warm up steps. You were familiar with this. I showed you several times. And then you just train your model. You have your trained data loader. We have this trained data loader. Ah, it doesn't work here. Train data loader defined, train data loader, whereas here with the data set and I know on the duplicates eliminated, you have your train loss. Remember the loss function is our 
Here we go. The last function is our multiple negatives ranking last model. Then, yeah, we have an evaluator. Do you find the number of epochs? You have some evaluation steps. Great. You have some little bit of a warm up, and you have the path to save the output. And this is it. And here you go. This is exactly what was requested adaptive pre training. Now, you might say, okay. So is this currently and not almost close to uh, April, May of 2022? Is this the best model? Well, I have to tell you, look at this. So we have two huge steps. We have some pre-training on the target domain. Now, depending on the size of your target domain, I don't know if you have 1 million sentences or 100 million sentences you can imagine you spend some quite some time and then you go with the model and do the fine tuning on whatever data set on the labeled uh, source data set you choose your source domain so you have quite some computation to do and maybe this is not you can do this yes of course but this might be not the optimal approach and as i told you uh, there is a strong development in the research area of sentence transformers and a solution to this problem or a further model, a further algorithm would be to go and further optimize this algorithm. And you have a publication on GPL and it is called Generative Pseudo-Labeling. This is about cross encoders and B encoders and their performance and whatever, but it would kill here my short video on this topic that was requested by my viewers, by my nine viewers, congratulations. And so I will make a continuation of this video about the latest, the best, the fastest, the leading and bleeding edge of research, GPL, generative pseudo labeling for sentence transformers for SBIRT. But this will be the content of a new video. So I say thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. You have an idea about the theory and about the coding of adaptive pre-training sentence transformers. And I see you in the next video.